Hello and welcome to our channel. In today's video, we will discuss about Kingdom Animalia or you can say Animal Kingdom. So basically in this video, we will discuss about the broadly classification of Kingdom Animalia. And along with this, we will also discuss some basic points which one should know regarding Kingdom Animalia. So let's start our today's video that is Kingdom Animalia or you can say Animal Kingdom. So first of all, we will discuss about the broad classification of Kingdom Animalia or you can say Animal Kingdom. So as you can see here on the screen, we have provided a picture of broadly classification of Kingdom Animalia. So as we all know that animals are also called as Matazoa. So Matazoa is divided into two subtypes. That is first one parazoa and second one eumatozoa. So let's talk about the first one that is parazoa. So parazoa which have cellular level of organization. So under parazoa comes first phylum that is phylum porifera. And second subtype of matozoa is eumatozoa which have tissue level of organization and which is further divided into three subtypes that is first one no body cavity between epidermis and gastrodermis second pseudocilomates and third silomates so first of all we will discuss about no body cavity between epidermis and gastrodermis so you can see here it's further divided into three phylums that is Phylum second, Cilantrata, and phylum third, Tenophora, and phylum fourth, that is Platyhelminthes. Now let's talk about the second subtype of Eumatozoa, that is Pseudocilomates. So under pseudo Pseudocilomates comes phylum fifth, that is Nematodes. And the third subtype of Eumatozoa is Silomates. Now you can see here Silomates are further divided into two subtypes. That is first subtype Mesodermal which is formed from a single cell during growth of the embryo. And second subtype Silome formed from pouches pinched off from the endoderm. Now, first of all, let's talk about the first subtype of silomate that is mesodermal, which is formed from a single cell during the growth of embryo. So you can see here it's further divided into three phylums. That is phylum sixth, Anilida, phylum seventh, mollusks, phylum eight, which is called arthropoda. And the second subtype of silomates, that is silom formed from pouches pinched off from the endoderm is further divided into two subtypes. That is first one with no notochord and second where notochord is present. So first of all we will discuss about the first subtype that is no notochord. So you can see here no notochord is again divided into two phylums that is phylum ninth echinodermata having no pharyngeal gill clefts and the tenth phylum that is hemichordata which has pharyngeal gill clefts present now next subtype of silom formed from pouches pinched off from the endoderm is where not a core is present so notochord is present in 11th phylum which is called as chordata now you can see here chordata which is our 11th phylum is further divided into two subtypes that is protochordata and vertebrata so first of all we will discuss about the protochordata which which means notochord which is present in at least larval forms 
So you can see here protochordates are further divided into two subtypes that is subphylum 1 brochordata and subphylum 2 cephalochordata. Now the second subtype of chordata is vertebrata which means not a cord replaced by vertebral columns in adults. So you can see here it's further divided into two subtypes that is agnatha and gnathosomes. Here agnatha is a subphylum 1 and gnathosomes is subphylum 2. Now we will discuss about the first subtype of vertebrata that is agnatha which is again divided into cyclo stomata which is our class 1 and next subtype of vertebrata is gnathostomes sorry gnathostomata which is a subphylum 2 and now you can see here gnathosomes are further divided into pisces amphibians reptiles abies and mammalia so, Pisces basically, we will talk about the first subtype of gnathosomes that is Pisces which means, which is having exoskeleton of scales, endoskeleton of bone and cartilage breathing through gills. So, you can see here Pisces are again divided into two subclasses that is chondrocytes which is class 1 and osteocytes which is class 2. Now next subtype of gnathosomes is amphibia which is class 3rd. So amphibians are basically gills in larva and lungs in most adults slimy skin. Third subtype of gnathosomes is reptilia which is of a class 4th which is having exoskeleton of horny scales or scutes laying eggs outside the water. And the next subtype of gnathosomes is ABs, which is our class fifth, which is having exoskeleton of feathers. They lay eggs outside the water in the flight as possible. And the next subtype of gnathosomes is mammalia, which is our class sixth. So mammalians basically which is having exoskeleton of hair, external ears, mostly giving birth to live youngs. Human beings comes under this. So this is a broadly classification of kingdom animalia. I hope this is clear to you. Now next. So first of all we will discuss about level of organization so depending upon the degree of complexity there are five different types of organizations in animals you can see here first protoplasmic level second cellular level third cell tissue level fourth tissue organ level and the fifth organ system level now one by one we will discuss about them in a brief so let's talk about the level of organization. So first level of organization is protoplasmic level. So what is protoplasmic level now? So protoplasmic or acellular level occurs in protozoa and other unicellular organisms. All life activities are confined within the boundaries of a single cell which is a structural and the functional unit of life. Within the cell, protoplasm is differentiated into specialized cytoplasmic structures or organelles which carry out functions such as nutrition, osmoregulation and locomotion. So this was all about the first level of organization which is protoplasmic and it's present in protozoa. You can see here the picture of protozoans. <coughs> now next level of organization that is the second one cellular level. 
So it comprises a loose association or the aggregation of the cells that are functionally differentiated. A division of labor is obedient so that some cells are concerned with, for example, reproduction, other with nutrition. Some protozoans forms like ball wax, as you can see here, that have distinct somatic and reproductive cells might be placed at the cellular level of organization and you can see here that volvox volvox comes under cellular level of organization this is a basic example of cellular level organization now third that is cell tissue level so what does it means an aggregation of similar cells into definite patterns or layers which results in the formation of tissue. You can see here the example jellyfishes and some cnidarians. They are the examples of cell tissue level organization. And another best example of Cell tissue level is nidarians, is a nerve net in which the nerve cells are their processes form a definite tissue structure with the function of coordination. So this was all about the cell tissue level. Now next, that is tissue organ level. Now what is what does it mean? So, the aggregation of tissues into organs is a further step in advancement. Organs usually consist of more than one kind of tissue and the first appearance of organ level is in the flat worms. As you can see here the picture, this is a picture of flat worms which is having tissue organ level of organization. So, in this group there are a number of well-defined organs such as eye sports, proboscis, and reproductive organs. In fact, the reproductive organs are well organized into reproductive system. So this was all about the tissue organ level organization. Now the last one that is organ system level organization. So let's talk about it. So when organs work together to perform some functions, we have the highest level of organization that is organ system level, in which the systems are associated with specific body functions such as digestion, respiration, circulation, excretion and reproduction. The simplest animals that show this type of organization are, you can see here, Platyhelminthes. They comes under. This is a. This is an example of organ system level organization. So platyhelminthes comes under this category. You can see here planaria, liver fluke, tape worm. So they have organ system level of organization. So this was all about the level of organization. Now next basic point that is animal body plan so you can see here it's further divided into three types that is cell aggregates blind sac and tube within tube now we will talk about them in brief so let's talk about animal body plan so first of all cell aggregates So cell aggregates body plan is exhibited by sponges as you can see here in the screen. This is a picture of a sponge and they have cell aggregate body plan which are protozoans. So the cells are loosely aggregated. They have no germ layers, no true tissues or organs and intracellular digestion. So this is the first type of animal body plan that is cell aggregates now second that is blind sac so this body plan is exhibited by some eumatozoas like nadarians and flatworms 
and the body of Hydra, which is a Nidaria. As you can see here, this is a picture of Hydra, which is having blind sack animal body plan. So, the body of Hydra resembles a sac with a single gastrovascular cavity that opens outside by mouth. This aperture is used for ingestion of food and ejection of fecal matter. So this was all about the second type. Now third one that is tube within tube animal body plan. Let's talk about it. So this is found in higher eumatozoas from nematohelminthes. So nematohelminthes are the best examples of tube within tube body plan. So as you can see here nematohelminthes. So their body consists of two tubes the outer body ball and the inner gut. The cells of the latter are specialized for digestion and absorption of digested food material. So this was all about the animal body plan. Now the third basic point that is animal symmetry. Basically animals have four type of symmetry that is spherical symmetry, radial symmetry, biradial symmetry and bilateral symmetry now we will talk about them in brief so let's talk about it one by one so first animal symmetry symmetry that we have is spherical symmetry so spherical symmetry it's found in animals whose body resembles a sphere as you can see here volvox volvox is an example of spherical symmetry any plane passing through the center divides the body into equivalent or mirrored halves. And this type of symmetry is found in chiefly in protozoans like Volvax, Halizoa and Radiolaria. And spherical forms are the best suited for floating and rolling. So this was all about the first symmetry. Now second symmetry we have radial symmetry. So in this body is in the form of a flat or a tall cylinder. One end of the longitudinal axis is usually the mouth and body can be divided into similar halves by more than two planes passes through the main axis. And radial symmetry is found in as you can see here the best example of radial symmetry that is starfish. We have given a picture here. And then other examples are hydra, jellyfish and sea urchins. So they are the best examples of radial symmetry. And radial animals are usually sessile, free floating, beakly swimming. These animals with no front or back end can interact with their environment in all directions. It is an advantage to sessile forms with feeding structures arranged to snare prey approaching from. So this is a variant form of radial symmetry as some part that is paired other than radial. Only two planes passes through the longitudinal axis with produced mirrored halves. And biradial symmetry is mainly found in sea walnuts, tenophora and Anthozoa. So these are the examples of biradial symmetry that is sea walnut and tenophora. So this was all about the biradial symmetry. Now last symmetry that is bilateral symmetry. So this applies to animals that can be divided along a median longitudinal or sagittal planes into two mirrored portions right and left halves. The appearance of bilateral symmetry in animals evolution was a major advancement because bilateral animals are much better suited for directional which means forward movements than are readily symmetrical animals. Bilateral animals are collectively called bilateria and example of bilateral symmetry is scorpions, crabs. 
so they comes under bilateral symmetry okay so this was all about the symmetries we have discussed different symmetries now the next basic point which we will discuss with you that is body cavity or you can say silom so body cavity is basically is a fluid filled space between the gut and outer body wall of an animal and you can see here four types of body cavities first acylomates second pseudocylomates third siloms and fourth one is hemocils so first of all we will talk about acylomates so acylomates animals without siloms or body cavity are called acylomates a means without and coleos means cavity best examples of acylomates are flatworms nadarians and platyhelminthes now the second body cavity that is pseudocilomes so they are the cavities not entirely lined by peritoneum thin cellular membranes and are derived from mesoderm embryologically a pseudocil may be a persistent blastocil or possibly derived from vacuoles within cells its function in much the same way as a silom in the west examples of siloms is nematohelminthes and other hair phylas and the third body cavity we have siloms so these are the secondary body cavities which are bounded on all sides by mesodermal peritoneum the true silom arises within the mesoderm itself and may be formed by one or two methods in the best examples of siloms are echinodermata and some higher chordates now the last body cavity that is hemocils so the primary body cavity or the blastocil persists to some extent in many animals either enclosed within narrow blood vessels or as in annelids are open as blood containing space called hemocil rapid blood circulation is then difficult to achieve but all the tissues are continuously bathed in blood and the best examples of hemocil body cavity is mollusks and arthropods so this was all about the body cavity so in this video we have discussed about the broad classification of kingdom animalia and along with that we have discussed some basic points regarding kingdom animalia that is various types of symmetries various types of body cavities various types of level of organizations and various types of animal body plans so that's all that's all for today see you guys in our next video that is with first phylum that is phylum porifera till then stay connected with us for more videos like this don't forget to subscribe and comment below stay safe stay healthy don't forget to meditate and exercise at least for 1 hour daily and yes see you guys with next video that is phylum porifera and thanks for watching our video